Hello and welcome back. This video will cover connecting your RT Toolbox program with a physical robot instead of with the simulator. I can create my new project just like in the past by clicking on New and providing a name. And then the process is pretty much the same except that you have to make sure that you're connecting to the right type of robot. We have an AS series controller and a horizontal type of robot with an 18 kilogram payload. And it is the RH 18SH8535 model. It is critical that you select this specific robot. If you select anything else, it will not work properly. In the past, you have been able to select pretty much any robot you wanted to use for the simulator. And up until now, that has been just fine. But because you will be loading your program into the actual robot, it is imperative that you have the robot in the software the same as what you will be loading your program onto. The other critical step is communication. Before, it didn't matter, but now you must select TCP IP as your communications method, and you must use one of the four IP addresses listed here on the screen. You must have the subnet mask correct, the gateway correct, as well as having the IP address correct. I'm going to connect to robot 4, which has an IP address of 141.225.160.217. For all the robots, the subnet mask is 255.255.248.0, and the gateway is 141.225.160.1. I can click Next, and I have to use the MELFA 4 basic, which means I have to use line numbers. We do not have a travel axis, so you can skip past this as well as the rest of the settings. Once you click Finish, instead of clicking Simulation, you will want to click Online. I'm going to switch over to the Communications bar so you can watch what occurs. As you can see, it turns a bluish color, and if you watch this, you will see the software and the robot sending data back and forth. I'm going to cut out much of the waiting, as this takes about a minute or so to happen. Once the communication state becomes blank, the software will have successfully negotiated the connection. If we have multiple robots connecting, we would be able to view the status of each one here. You will also notice that in the workspace tree, an online option will be added. And since I don't have any programs written for this robot yet, and since I don't have any programs written for this robot yet, the program folder will be empty. But if there were programs already on the robot, they would show up in the programs branch. I can create a new program just like you did on the Citrix VM, giving it a name of sample in this case. I can then write the program just like before. Just like before, I need to add my points to the program. You will see that it says online in the title bar of the program, and we can save the program by pressing Control and the S key. But we can still get the current position by clicking on the Get Current Position button, just like when we were in the simulator. The big difference is that you will notice that as the points are added, the positions are not all zero, but instead reflect the real current position of the physical robot. So the coordinates being displayed are where the robot is really positioned. And if we open up the operator panel and click on the 3D monitor button, we will see the robot's actual poise reflected in the RT Toolbox software. And then, as we physically move the robot, we will see the 3D monitor update the new robot position. Because we are online with an actual robot controller, if you right click on the program branch of the project tree, you will be presented with the option to open the program manager and be able to see what is actually on the controller. And you can copy, move, rename, or delete programs on either the controller or the computer. If you click the checkbox for the program on the robot controller, you can copy the file to the computer. But because we had the file open for editing, we got the error. But if we save and close the program, we can then perform the copy by ensuring that our source and destinations are correct.
And as you can see, the program now exists in both places. And of course, we could create a program offline on the computer and then copy it to the controller. Now, and as you can see, now we can even select a program on the controller for execution. Hopefully this has made sense. Of course, it will take some getting used to once you are in front of the robot, but that's what the in-lab portion is for. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.